everyone. Welcome to your talk. Exploiting Windows Com and WinIT Service. This is Xue Fengli. I'm a security researcher of Sanford. This research is a joint work with Dr. Zhi Liangpeng, who is a principal security researcher of Sanford. It's our pleasure to share our research here. In the last year, we have found more than 100 bugs in Windows Com and WinIT Service. In this presentation, we will disclose some of these bugs and our exploit approach for some of them. Here is our agenda. In this talk, I divide these bugs into the following three types. Risk condition bugs, type confusion bugs, memory also bound bugs. I peel some of these bugs and I'll share the detail of them and our exploit approach for them. Before that, I'll introduce some basic of count and a count thread model. So firstly, I introduce some basic knowledge of COM. COM provides a framework that allows remote communication between clients and the servers implemented in different languages. In a communication process, the invoker first, ma first marshals the data through the runtime callable wrapper, and the marshal data is transmitted through the COM object, object framework, and then enters the COM callable wrapper. After the COM callable wrapper unmarshal the data, it finally calls the corresponding interface of the provider. Count is widely used in Windows system. They are often used for cross-process communication, especially between low privilege process and high privilege process. This provides a time surface for attackers to get privilege escalation. And there has been a lot of research on COM and VRT published by James Forshaw. We don't intend to discuss the detail of the basic of COM here. Next, let's discuss the first type of the vulnerability, risk condition bugs in COM and WinRT. The first is the inner working of COM and the COM thread models. When we discuss the thread model, we must first discuss the safety of the thread model. Thread safety is a computer programming concept in the context of multiple thread programs. A piece of code is thread safe if it functions correctly during simultaneous executions by multiple threads. However, when multiple threads access shared resource without synchronization check, there may be some risk to cause some risk condition issues. In the design of car model, the client doesn't know whether the server is thread safe. At, at the same time, the client can access the server at any time and anywhere. In addition, the client is not, not responsible for thread safe work. So to achieve thread safe, the server must be thread safe, but it's difficult to guarantee this. Microsoft provides a parameter model to reduce complexity, complexity of COM thread safety. A parameter model is a property of a COM thread stored in thread local storage. It can set or reset the property by COM API. And the invoke thread is used to complete the client to server call and is created in server process during the client to server call. Apartment models can be divided into three types. Single thread apartment model, also called the NA, multiple thread apartment model, also called the NA, neutral apartment model, also called the NA. In STA, there could be several apartments in process and only one thread in each apartment. And in MTA, there could be zero or one apartment in process, and if and if there exists an apartment, there could be several threads in it. And for NA, there could be zero or one apartment in a process, but there is no thread in the existing apartment. The image shows how threads work in different apartment models. STA is like a single room. A STA apartment can only accommodate one calling thread. If other calls want to enter the STA apartment, they must enter the Windows Max queue and wait until the apartment is free. The, a the MTA apartment can accommodate multiple calling threads at the same time. All the calling threads in the ATA apartment share the same MTA apartment. For the NA apartment, when a call is made into a neutral thread object, the current thread is temporarily commandeered by the neutral apartment for the duration of the call. Let's talk about the thread model of COM object. In COM, thread model is a property of COM object and it decides which apartment the COM object can enter in. Different from the apartment model, Thread models are related, related to the COM object, but apartment models are related to the invoker thread. Thread model includes following, following 
five types. Single thread model, apartment thread model, free thread model, both thread model, neutral thread model. The difference between this thread model and many in the types of apartment models supporting. For single and apartment thread model, there are no thread safety issues. For the free, both neutral thread models, there may be some thread safety issues. So what will happen when, we, when a call is made between invoke thread and count object? Best of course, from invoke thread to count object in the same apartment are made directly. In MTA apartment, all the invoke thread in the MTA apartment can invoke the same count object at the same time. In STA apartment, there could be only one thread in one apartment. So there could be only one thread invoke the count object at the same time. For NA apartment, all the invoke thread can invoke the count object in NA apartment at the same time. In this talk, we are only talk about the direct call during the invoke thread and the count object. Best of course, made the cross apartment are achieved via marshalling, but there is no what we are going to focus on today. So for a simple conclusion, for a single thread model and a apartment thread model, access to the same object resource can only be performed by single thread which will not cause any safety issues. For free, both neutral thread model, aside to the same object resource can be performed by multiple thread at the same time, which is likely to cause some thread safety issues, especially assess the data in shared resource area. Next, we pick some representative risk condition bugs as examples to explain. Before talking about today's first sample, we, must, we want to briefly explain the background of the text surface we have chosen. In the Windows system, WinRT is widely used in UDAP applications, and the WinRT API provides powerful UI and advanced asynchronous functions. UDAP applications are designed to run in the low privileged AP container sandbox, but they can interact with the medium level runtime broker by creating the partial trust runtime class object which provides a large attack surface for escaping the AP container sandbox. Today's first sample is a risk condition use of the vulnerability we found in partial trust runner class. Same retail runner class is used to create numbers and provide information about a secondary tail. It exposes the interface method for the phonetic name and get phonetic name for user to get or set the phonetic name. Assess the interface method in the UDP application, we will trigger a call in the runtime broker at the medium level. By using the OLEView.net, we can find that secondary tail object can be created in multiple thread apartments, which means this interface may have thread safety issues. By observing the implementation of the function put phonetic name, we can find that this function will duplicate your edge string object and save your edge string object in your current object. Then, free the previously saved edge string in the current object. If there are only one thread calling this method, there will be no issues. But what if there are multiple threads together? We can assume that there are two threads, thread 1 and thread 2, take the same stream from this dot phonetic name as shown in the first picture. And then thread 1 and thread 2 cross the function Windows delete string with the same stream object as shown in the second picture. This could cause the free operation applied to the same object twice. The, the leaking of the resource synchronization check on the shown code can be easily turned into a uh, use of free issues. Here we provide a simple proof of consent. What we need to do is creating multiple threads and calling the same method as a, of the same object together. The crash will be easily triggered. So how could we explore such risk condition bugs? Here, here we provide a, an approach. We can create four car objects and put four edge string objects into this object. The size of edge string should be large enough to, to avoid LFH so that, the, so that the four edge string objects will be consecutive in the memory. We free edge string 2 and assume, and assume that there are three threads. When they access shared resource in the following order, the vulnerability will become exploitable. First, the thread one enters and frees the H3 3 and at the same time, Windows Heap Manager will merge this freed chunk and make them to be a larger chunk. And then the thread two enters and 
and uh, allocate a uh, string with the appropriate size and make it reduce the read chunk and cover the memory space where string 3 is located. And then the use of the read bug happens. The thread 3 enters and still uses the free h string 3. But but h, h string 3 has been rewritten, rewritten to the new h string so that we'll get a controllable h string 3. Observing the definition of h string, the two important part is the length of the and the buffer point. Length is the buffer length. The buffer pointer point pointer to the real buffer. We can build the bug to make an evil H string. You write buffer pointer to arbitrary address and then you write the buffer length. Then we can call asynchronously tell dot get phonetic name to get read of the well parameter. Or come. Read was well is enough to cause code execution. And then we'll discuss how to get code execution from read was well later. But in fact, it's hard to exploit this risk condition bug stably, since we cannot guarantee we can win the risk condition. It's easy to cause a crash, but you can keep trying until you succeed. The next part is a public example, CV2020-625. It's a con interface access route exposed by local con server double search. We only focus on two methods, put schedule and get schedule. Put schedule is used to copy a user controllable buffer into I search root object. Get schedule is used to read the buffer data saved in I search root object. Let's take a look at the implementation of the function. Here is a pseudo code. Firstly, we notice that there is no resource synchronization check on the showing code. And then this function will firstly calculate, calculate the this the buffer length as a prompt of call task memory lock. Then we calculate the this the buffer length as a prompt of string CCH copy to copy the data in this those buffer into newly allocated buffer. The issue is, is if this those buffer length used for the first time is different from the this those buffer length for the second time, which means the other thread you write the this those buffer pointer by calling i search root those put schedule between the first calculating and the second calculating, causing the buffer length is different. Especially the buffer length is used for the second time is longer than they are used for the first time. Taking large size as copy size and copy data into small buffer will cause a heap out of bound writing issues. At the present, there are already public articles giving out how to exploit this vulnerability. You can read it through the link below. The next part is from type computation bus to code execution. This bar comes from a runtime class interface, iChar.ml node. You can get it from partial trust runtime class. Windows.ui.notification.toastmodification manager. This runtime class is post a class called iChar.ml document for user to pass a char.ml file. After successful passing, you can get a char.ml node object from server. After some reverse engineering of the interface, we found a type confusion bug. This bug exists in the interface function append child. This function will take a user controllable iChar.ml node object as input param. This function will call node I are not to node to get a node object from your input object. Node I are not to node function will then call object get object from I are node function. Let's have a look at the implementation. This function will firstly take your input object and call query interface with the input ID as parameter. If it gets failed, this function will then call query interface to get a I service provider object. After that, this function will then call iServiceProvider.getService to get a iSequential string object. And finally, we reach the vulnerable part. The read function will copy 24 bytes binary data into a node data array. And the last 8 bytes will be regarded as the return object address. And the read function is implemented by client, so the return object address is fully controllable by attacker. So how could we exploit this bug? We will discuss separate, separately on x86 system and x64 system. 
The first is on the SCT-686 system. The primitive we have is the object pointer we can control. What we need is an address we can fully control, so we can point the object address to the fully controllable address. In X86 system, we can use heap spray to achieve this. With heap spray, we can put many fake objects into server heap, and there is a certain probability that a certain address is a fake object we want. For example, hexadecimal 1000000 with a heap spray. We can forge the VF table and forge the object contents. The later usage of the fake object could cause the RIP point to the address we want, and through careful construction, we can achieve code execution. To achieve the heap spray, we need to find an object interface, which allows users to put many interesting objects into server heap. For example, iCharmian node does put node value. The next part is X64 system. On the X64 system, we cannot directly use the heap spray to get a certain address that contains the object we forged. It requires a huge memory consumption. To, to exploit this bug, we need an extra info leak bug to leak where our fake object locates. The last part is the out of bounds write vulnerability. We found, we found this bug can be triggered stably. The vulnerable account interface is iWallet custom property. This interface is exposed by local server wallet service. The vulnerable function is set group method. Observing the implementation of set group function, we note that this function writes a user controllable value into current object with a user controllable set. The issue is the lack of the offset range check can easily cause a heap out of bound writing issues. After some reverse engineering of the method exposed by iWallet's custom property, we found the function setLabel. This function is used to get a bitstream object from the input tag prop variance parameter, and then convert the bitstream object to a sysstring object and save the and save to current object. By exploiting the out of bounds writing box, we, uh, we can forge the sysstring object stored in this at 48, we can easily get a white was well primitive. The function get label is used to read the bitstream buffer from the saved system object and return the tag probe var variant which contains the bitstream buffer to user. We can force the bitstream object as a parameter applied to syslog string to get read was well primitive. We are now get both arbitrary read a primitive and the arbitrary write primitive. So how could we exploit them? We'll talk about write what's well first. We can create multiple I what is custom property objects at the same time. So they will be consecutive in the memory. By using the heap also bound the writing box, we can rewrite the I what is custom property object, control its VF table and other object member. And then we can explore our write what we are primitive to write a fake of VF table into a global writable address. And then by coding the method of the fake object, we can fully control the IRP. So how can we achieve code execution? After some, after some searching, we found a gadget that will help us. It's a destructor of CDXGI adapter object. This function will Take a global pointer as the first parameter to call load library. It's easy for us to rewrite the global pointer to load arbitrary Dell in local count server and gain code execution. For the next part, we'll talk about how can we exploit the read what well parameter to gain code execution. The source of the evil is the interface I run down. So this interface are exposed by every count process. James Fosher has re written about this interface in Google Project Zero's blog. You can read his blog and, un and uh, understand this interface. We have found, the, found this interface by passing the count process IPID list. The definition of the I rundown interface is shown in the figure on the right. When a uh, apartment is, init is initialized, count runtime will create a new I rundown interface for each apartment. 
the, this interface is, is important for method call between apartments. For example, a uh, invoke thread in STA calling a car object in MTA. So in order to make a course across apartment easier, I run down expose the two go pack method for safety reasons. This interface is only used for internals of current runtime. But in fact, it provides a new approach for our attack. To prevent the dual callback method being abused, current time initializes a secret value, which will be stored into face memory location. Only in process caller can get the value of the secret, unless external process can read the secret from the process memory. Let's have a look at the implementation of the dual callback function. The function receives a parameter, as apt callback, you need to encapsulate the required parameter in the xapt callback structure to call this method. You need to ensure that you know the secret value of the server to ensure that you will not be rejected. You also need to make sure you know what the value of gmtmtctx is. If your input parameter can meet the check, your callback function will take a function pointer from your input parameter and also get the first, first parameter from your input. This gives us the ability to control the IP. But because, but because of the control flow ground, we must find a suitable function to gain code execution. And we can only control the first parameter of this function. It is easy to think of the load library function. This function accepts a string as a parameter and loads any data we, serve, we specify. We only need to do is set, is set pfn callback to the address of the load library function and set pprom to the address of the string which contests our Dell pass. But now, we still have some problems to be solved. With the read was well primitive, both secret and gpmtctx can be read from fixed memory in convex.dev. For p callback data, those pfn callback, we can pick load library for our target. What we need now is a proxy, is a proxy of a rundown object from local server so that we can call dual callback method from client. P callback data, uh, those P prompt require to be a pointer, point to a user control of a string. But how could we input a string into local server and find where this string locates? It said to solve the first problem, getting a I run down object proxy from local server. We should know that when the client call call create instance to require a I run object from local server, the local server will return the object ref buffer to of the I run object to client. The client stub can pass in can pass the object ref buffer to get the proxy of the I run object. So can we abuse the process to get the I run down object? The answer is yes. After figuring out how could we after figuring out how could we get a I an object proxy from local server, we use similar steps to obtain a I run the object proxy from local server. First, we can get a I an object proxy from local server. Then call call Marshall interface to the to get the object ref buffer of the I an object. Replace the IP ID to IP ID I run down. Replace the IP ID to IP ID I run down. And finally, cause the call on Marshall interface to get the I run down object proxy. But we still don't know the IP ID of the I run down object. So that part is getting the IP ID of the I run down object. What we, what we need to do is passing the IP ID table with our read what we parameter. You can firstly get the global IP ID table pointer from fixed memory in compass.dev. And then we can pass the tag IP ID entry list to get all the exposed objects information. By comparing the IP ID with IID, uh, by, compare, com, by comparing the IID with the IID I run down, we can get the IP ID of I run down object. After getting a I run down object proxy from local server, we should set p callback data those the p prompt to use the control of the string. The step one, we should if our data pass into local server, the syslabia function will help us, which will take a bit stream from input variant and save it into current object. And the step two, we know that our data pass are saved into i-valid service object. 
we need to find the address of the I, what is the custom property object in the server. We also use call Marshall interface to get the IP ID of I, what is custom property object object proxy in client. By comparing by comparing the IP ID with IP with the IP ID table, we have found found that the real I what is custom custom property object address as a PV member. According to previous risk engineering, we can know that all their paths will be saved into this at 48, so that we can know the address of our Dell pass. Here we provide the demo to explore it really well to get code execution. So, in conclusion, in this presentation, we have talked about the inner working of count thread model, and we showed some vulnerabilities related to the count thread safety. We also provide the type confusion and memory out of bounds bugs we found, and shared our exploratory approach for them. Obviously, count and MRT are still good targets for LP bugs hunting. Thank you everyone for listening. Any questions?